Can a nation without the ability to deploy units achieve a world conquest? The nation I'm talking about is Algeria, but not this Algeria. If you start as France and do these three focuses, and then release Algeria while retaining course, you will create the objectively worst nation in hearts of Iron 4. It has no factories, no resources, no research, only 3000 manpower, and worst of all, it's an impassable train, so you can't even deploy units. Showing me as I attempt to take Algeria from a weak and helpless nation to the only world power. I started the game on non-historical and quickly did the three focuses, then released Algeria. My goals for the early game were the following. Turn fascist, join the Axis, build strategic bombers, and with the help of Germany, capitulate the Netherlands. So to start with the first goal, I did political effort and hired a fascist demagogue. I also hired a ship of Air Force to start gaming RXP. I researched everything required to build strategic bombers. When I got my first military factory, I created this design and started producing. A while later I had enough fascist support to do a referendum. Now that I was fascist, I was able to join the Axis and start justifying on the Dutch East Indies. I sent all my bombers to Germany. When the war goal was ready, I declared war and started bombing the Netherlands. While doing that, I started justifying on France. After I had enough war score, I called Germany to the war. In the peace conference, I had enough to puppet two islands in the Dutch East Indies. I could now deploy units there. So with that problem solved, I trained some paratroopers and sent them to Germany. When the France war goal was ready, I got ready to paratroop. This was a critical point in the game. If I didn't capitulate France in time, they would capitulate me. So everything had to go smoothly. Now that I was at war with a major power, I could justify war goals a lot quicker. So I took advantage of this by justifying on Spain and Portugal. In the peace conference I took back my core states and puppeted the rest. With France under my control I was now in the mid game. My goals are now warm Al Andalus, capitulate the UK and build a large amount of tanks. To form Al Andalus you need large parts of both Spain and Portugal. So that's why I'm justifying on them. Before the war I used French guns and manpower to make a full army of infantry. I also requested the French units. Now with Al-Andalus formed and the Yuki capped, I entered the end game. My goals were now build a lot of tanks and capitulate everyone. I put all my newly acquired factories on tanks. This was my tank template. Later I switched motorized with mechanized infantry. Italy and Switzerland were at war, so I decided to intervene. First I declared war on Italy and landed with paratroopers in Sicily. I pushed north without facing much resistance. Right before Italy capitulated, I started just flying on Switzerland. My tanks were ready, so I deployed them in Barcelona and moved them to the front. They did very well.
My next target was Austria-Hungary. Before the war I trained an additional 6 tanks and then I just needed some micro. With Austria-Hungary capped, I now had three choices. Attack the USA, attack Russia, or attack Germany. I went with the first option. I had annexed Mexico from the war with the UK, so I could attack through there. Now I just had to move the tanks to Mexico and declare war. The USA is now dead. Next, I will capitulate the Russian faction. While doing that, I will also capitulate some miners. It was now time for the final showdown. The Caliphate of Cordoba versus the entire Axis. After a two year war I had now capitulated the last major faction. The only thing left was to capitulate the remaining countries. With that done, the world conquest was now over. This was the hardest world conquest I've ever done. And the luck needed was also huge. Thanks for watching, goodbye. Ooh. You will like, subscribe and watch this video next.